Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for having me here. My name is Sharon Rufus. I'm an interventional fellow at Alban Hospital, Canton, Ohio. Um, I personally have no disclosure. These are disclosures I'm attending on the case. Um, the objectives are, are, are just to discuss the complication we had during one of our seemingly not quite straightforward tower. Um, a simple, you know, misstep kind of led to a uh, lot of stress during the case. So just want to share the experience here. So a summary is a 70-year-old female who got referred to her valve clinic, had three out of four uh, NIHA uh, symptoms, essentially shortness of breath, a lot of uh, other comorbidities, diastolic heart failure, a lot of bleeding diastasis like peptic ulcer disease, myelodysplastic syndrome, a platelet spare close to 60,000, uh, severe frailty as well. So considering all this, uh, we decided to pursue a TAVR uh, route on this lady. Um, pretty significant uh, valve stenosis, valve area is 0.6, and the mean grain is 51 millimeter mercury. So we had a hard team discussion, and we all agreed, you know, she'd be better suited with the TAVR rather than a, a SAVR, despite the STS score being 4.1 here. Uh, the primary concern in this uh, patient was uh, low coronary osteal height. I can show you the CT in the next slides here. Uh, you know, it wasn't terrible, but we were concerned about this. So our strategy up front is to um, do a BAV to see if there's any um, cessation of left main flow, which is something we do. Uh, we don't do BAVs routinely, but you know, uh, to valve size and occasionally concerned about coronary heights, we do this. Um, so this uh, pre-angiogram notices the uh, native coronaries. So this was our BAV, the balloon did jump. But despite that, we got this idea that the left main flow is uh, fairly, you know, uh, compromised. But you can actually see we already have a guide there. Um, we had a bare metal stent drop down in the distal um, uh, left coronary in anticipation of this. So we decided to, you know, uh, proceed with the valve deployment. We used the balloon expand platform that was valve. Um, I'm going to show you the next slide. I'll give it a few seconds for you guys to see if there's something which catches type, because certainly it didn't catch RI during the deployment. We were so focused on the valve. So let the loop run, and then I'll see what we retrospectively noticed here. So we had a good valve deployment. The problem was, you know, our coronary guide wire, we, used, uh, we actually used the guide to take an injection to, uh, let me play it again. We used the guide to get an AO gram, and the coronary guide would actually prolapse into the LV, um, and then the valve deployed. Um, and now you're stuck with the coronary wire stuck in two different you know parts in the valve. It's basically jailed um, in, in two different spots in the analyst. You have a distal stent, you know. So we are starting to know what to do with this. You know, can we get the stent out? Um, so here we are. We didn't notice that initially, but our echocardiographer picked up a, a echo lucent line right away, which wasn't the, um, you know, a, a valve wire. So we went back and looked at the pictures and, and noticed that our guide were actually prolapsed. Um, you know, so we had to get ourselves back to see what we we're going to do with this. The main concern was stent loss. You know, we don't want to pull the stent back and lose a stent and we have a whole different problem now. So we decided to kind of uh, check out the integrity of the whole system. So initially we just tried pulling back the guide wire just a little bit, there's a lot of tension in it. So we realized it's not gonna be a winning battle to just try to get the stent out. So we decided to deploy the stent to left main to avoid stent temporalization. That was a primary concern here. And we can deal with whatever's left uh, you know, uh, as a next step. So we went ahead and deployed the left main stent and we had good flow in the left main. Um, we still have the balloon shaft, the stent balloon shaft uh, in our left main. You can see it in the second picture there. It's still in the left main, so the challenge is to get this out now. Uh, again, we started feeling it, we started retracting it very gently, not to lose anything. You can see the tension in the valve. You can see the valve rocking as we try to retract this. Um, so, and, and to careful, if you see the last frame, the stent has come almost all the way to the, uh, the other, other cusp, actually. But we, at this point, basically, the stent uh, balloon platform uh, just broke off. You know? So we have uh, stent balloon shaft stuck in the valve with some part of the wire flushed against the aorta. Uh, we spent a good 30 minutes trying to uh, use different snares to try, uh, you know, hook onto something to get the balloon out. 
Uh, but we were also concerned about the valve embolizing because we saw a lot of rocking motion, which is trying to get this out. Uh, we really couldn't um, you know, hook onto any part of it. So at this time, the patient was stable. Our echo pictures were pristine. The gradients were good. There was no PVL, um, no hemodynamic compromise, so we, we decided to stop. Um, this was our fine. So yeah, you can see the balloon shaft actually right, right, right at the valve tip. Um, and the final echo confirmed that it, it's still in the uh, LVOT. Um, so you can see the uh, part of the balloon shaft kind of flushed against the aortic wall. Um, so take home points, you know, un unexpected complications occur despite, you know, being, we getting more facet with TAVR as, cells, as such. So just be cognizant of equipment displacement. Um, our, our change uh, in our practice was not to use the guide to use AOGrams going, going forward. So we always get a dedicated pigtail nowadays. Even if you had a, a protective coronaries, we probably take a radial axis or something like that. So we've stopped doing guide injections since, since this case. Um, you know, just keep learning from every procedure. And this was the residual, the other end of the balloon shaft, actually. Thank you. Oh, that was a tough case. Yeah. Good, great one to see as a fellow. Yeah. <laughs> so you know what to do next time. Uh, long term, what's your plan going forward? So uh, long term, you know, we discussed the merits of longer anticoagulation and so on, uh, antiplatelet therapy. Um, she had a left main stint, so we did one month of antiplatelet. She's at high bleeding risk, has bled in the recent past, platelets of 60,000. It's been a year and a half out. We've had a couple of CT scans, and, and, and she's done well. Uh, you know, our, our hope is it'll just endothelialize uh, against the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no valve damage as such. The gradients are not been increasing, so we're just watching her clinically. Great.